royal family is unique within the realms of British sitcoms, precisely because of the fact that it's very unsitcom like There's no laugh track, it's all shot on 16mm film, utilising a deliberately shaky, almost handheld approach to the camera work, and most episodes consist of people sat around the TV doing nothing but talking shit, smoking and eating. And that's what makes it so genius. The combined talents of Carolina Hearn, Craig Cash and a few other writers somehow made what is essentially people sat down doing nothing for 30 minutes, one of the funniest, most well-observed British comedies of them all. See, the royal family isn't laughing at this lifestyle, it's shining a light on it. If you're British, then I'm willing to bet many of your evenings have been spent with your family in front of the telly talking utter, utter shite. The show is so well observed that almost everything these characters say and do conjures up memories of family get-togethers and Christmases long past. Carolina Hearn and Craig Cash fought for the show not to have a laugh track. They fought for it to be shot on 16mm film rather than videotape. They fought for it not to be a traditional sitcom, instead making it almost a window into the living rooms of the nation at the time. However, there's one episode which somewhat eschews the formula of the show, and yet somehow it still succeeds in conjuring up memories, good and bad, of times with my family. It's one of only three pieces of media that doesn't just make me cry, but makes me fall to pieces in tears. There's Life is Strange, video coming soon, The Body from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and the subject of this video, the royal family, the Queen of Sheba. The Queen of Sheba was the first of five specials broadcast after the initial three series run. The series had been off the air for six years and fans were desperate for a return, and boy, this was one hell of a return. The Queen of Sheba is a genius piece of writing which completely succeeds in everything it sets out to do and makes the viewer feel every painful bit of emotion. It's some of the most perfect 60 minutes of British television I've ever seen, perfectly balancing reintroductions, goodbyes, hilarity and heartbreak. Unlike the previous three series, the action doesn't take place in real time in one location. It doesn't stay in one place for too long and completely eschews the grounded, documentary-esque shooting style that the series was famous for. Oh, there's still some of that, but this time there are montages set to non-diegetic songs, slow-mo shots, freeze frames, etc. To some, this might seem like a complete betrayal of the roots of the show, but this all works supremely well precisely because it's such a subversion of the audience's expectations. It feels like a natural finale to those three series. It also fits thematically, this is a return to the world of the royals, it's a reintroduction to every character that we've grown to love, but we've not seen in years. Sometimes in life when you catch up with someone you've not seen in a while, it can be surprising, it's not quite how you remember them. For example, we see the character of Anthony is now a father and a successful businessman, despite him having little prospects in the original series. At a base level, this change in style, though subtle, makes this special feel like an event, a milestone in these characters' lives, and a milestone this is. See, the reason this episode has such a profound effect on me, and many others, is because its main focus is the character of Nana, her decline in health and eventually her death. I struggle now to put into words how talented these writers are because this subject matter is such a delicate balancing act. You don't want to play it entirely for laughs and negate any impact her death has, but you also don't want to depress your audience and not give any laughs in your comedy show. It balances everything perfectly. It's a really cliched statement, but you know you've got insanely talented writers when you're laughing hysterically one minute and crying your eyes out the next. The royal family had done emotional scenes before, take the beautifully done scene in the first Christmas special where Denise goes into labour, but it had never quite tackled anything like this before. The show had built itself on being an intimate portrait of those long evenings in front of the TV, and now we were seeing an intimate portrait of those final months of a person's life, and all the odd moments that come with that. Those moments when you're laughing at silly things despite everything that's going on around you. When you laugh through the pain, life goes on with all the emotions that come with it, despite the fact that it can often feel like the world is crumbling around you. Not only that, but also the moments where you're forced to confront the pain and reality of the situations you're in. The scene where Nana asks Barbara if she's a burden and they start to sing K Sera whilst Barbara breaks down in the background is one of the most human, beautifully performed scenes I've ever seen in a British comedy. I'm not a burden to you, am I, Barbara? You're never a burden. I do love you, Barbara. Nana knows she's not got long left, and Barbara knows it too, but this one beautiful, painful bit of connection between mother and daughter remains. Liz Smith and Sue Johnson are giving career best work here. 
Nana's death is something you know is inevitable as soon as the episode reintroduces her, and it all culminates with Barbara coming downstairs one terrible morning to find her mother unresponsive, and this is where we get an intimate, personal selection of goodbyes from all the family. If anyone has ever lost a grandparent, they'll know immediately what this is like. Set to Scarlet Ribbons by Sinead O'Connor, this scene is pitched perfectly and is perfectly observed. It's a pitch perfect representation of everything you feel in those final hours. The montage echoing the way time seems to stop and pass so slowly. It's somehow a complete encapsulation of those final moments with a loved one. And then, bittersweet joy. The family gathers together at the wake, remembering Norma Jean Speakman in a way that was true to her. It's a beautifully uplifting and bittersweet ending. For a show whose most iconic character is a man who spends his days farting and moaning about the telly, to deliver such a perfectly observed blend of emotion and humour, it's an incredible bit of writing. So genius, so clever and so perfect. The Queen of Sheba is what happens when you take a show renowned for its authenticity and accuracy of portraying the smallest of details and apply that style and those characters to a serious, dramatic situation. Carolina Hearn and Craig Cash are so talented, they have the audience in the palm of their hands and can manipulate them in whatever way they want. The Queen of Sheba is a stunning piece of television, the royal family's finest hour, a true masterpiece that doesn't get talked about enough. Rest in peace Carolina Hearn, you absolute genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah.